Yeah. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm Madeline, I've come from rugby just because I heard that this day was on um, from my list of friends. I've got four connections with conscientious objection. The first was John Payne, who lived at Lutterworth. He was born in the 1880s and Lutterworth, um, he saw the railway come to Lutterworth and through Lutterworth and close from beaching going there. But at one time, when he wanted to come into Leicester, he would walk for two hours, ten miles in two hours, and then he'd be able to get a train back or the other way around. He had to do a quick sprint, so that was his Leicester connection. Um, John was the son of a basket maker in Lutterworth and helped his father, joined in the village activities, and then when conscription came in 1616, decided he was not going to fight. And the village, of course, turned against him. His house windows were broken. His father's business was disrupted as far as people could disrupt it. And he, they went through a miserable, I don't know if it was weeks or months, but he, then he was arrested and taken to Wakefield Prison. Um, expected to put on army uniform. They, they refused to do so and were... I don't know how they were dressed or kept warm, but they... They went through a spell where they were not properly clad. Um, a memory, I, I remember him telling me that at one time they were taken down to um, the beach and were told it was implied that they could be shot if they didn't put the uniform on and serve. And the stories were coming back from France about the horrors over there. But these men kept their principles and stayed in Wakefield Prison. They were returned to the prison. I'm not too sure whether they were allowed visitors from Wakefield Quaker Meeting or whether he met on the street afterwards when they were allowed out a little bit before they were actually fully released. He met a young girl from um, Wakefield. Anyway, he came back to, um, eventually back to Lutterworth and the village was still fairly hostile to him, but he was a very good rugby player and he had friends in the rugby team who were in the police force and at that point the police decided to protect him and he, he was able to reintegrate. He did keep in touch with the girl and after a few years thought he'd write to her and he would cycle up from Lutterworth to Wakefield to see her. <laughs> And they eventually married. <laughs> and and he, they stayed in Lutterworth and he earned his living from a, a small holding that they were able to acquire on the edge of the town. My second connection was with my father, who felt in the 1930s that he could not join an army, that he would never be ordered by anybody to kill anybody. And he found that Quakers were sympathetic. Um, he, first of all, he went to tribunal and he was given a choice. He could either go in the mines or go in the ambulance service or go on to farm work. So he went to farm work. I think he probably chose that because it was would be the most likely to keep the family intact. And yeah, the farms he was placed on were quite hostile to conscientious objectors. There were two reasons for that. One was the war ag, war ag as it was called, the government um, in section department in control of the food and agriculture um, said that farms had been very inefficiently run up to that time and they had to improve and they didn't like this government pressure and they didn't like the men coming to, who were sent to help improve the farming um, and the other reason was of course their own workers had left to go and fight and so to have these upstarts sent with no conscience as they would see it being sent to them and my father was a shop assistant from a town, so he hadn't got any rural background or physique um, really in tune with what the farmers were wanting. Um, but my father actually had companionship in the first, fairly soon, but when we were able to go and join him, because there were two cottages in the country. It was a mile up a lane to anywhere apart from the farm, um, but the next farm cottage was also by a conscientious, filled by a conscientious objector and his family, so we, we had lifelong friends there. Um, and then when my brother was in the same age group as Richard, he had to go to tribunal, 
with his friend, his friend Owen Edwards. Um, Owen wasn't um, allowed any exemption and he was imprisoned. Which years were these, Richard, end of 1950s? He was in prison for three months. Um, my brother was allowed to go and do, to work in a, the railway, considered essential work, so he went to a railway's office. So there are my four connections.